do you get from this to this? For free? What? Greetings from Seville Man. Today, I'll show you a technique which may significantly boost performance of your laptop. It's called undervolting. This may sound a bit counterintuitive, as desktop CPUs usually get overvolted or overclocked, but laptops, these are completely different beasts. Please note that while undervolting of modern CPUs is completely safe, some OEMs may try to avoid your warranty should they learn you tamper with stock voltage settings. Therefore, you know what to do. Play it safe and only at your own risk. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's have a look at a Lenovo laptop which I have at my disposal. It is an IdeaPad with Intel i5 8250U CPU. This Ultrabook suffers from a common issue that plagues many small form factor laptops, and that is throttling. What is this throttling thing all about? See, when electronic components are in operation, they generate heat that needs to be dissipated. Desktop computers usually have plenty of room inside the case to accommodate fairly large heat sinks, which is not at all the case with laptops. Not only the heat buildup causes performance degradation, it also makes fans run at full speed, which is loud and very annoying. I mean, very annoying. Laptops are therefore equipped with low power CPUs that have a quite limited power envelope. For example, it is 18.8 watts in the case of this idea pad. Moreover, modern CPUs or GPUs combat high temperatures programmatically. First, they lower their clock speeds because lower clock speed requires less voltage and less voltage results in less heat. As modern CPUs or GPUs lower their clock speeds when they get too hot, in a similar fashion, they do increase their clock speed, provided they have sufficient power budget as well as temperature headroom. We're going to explore this behavior today. Let me demonstrate this phenomenon in a before-after video. I'm running three passes of Cinebench R23 on my laptop at stock settings. Let's observe the clock speed of the CPU and see how quickly it can render the scene. I will do the same thing with 3D Mark's Nitrate afterwards. I have sped up the rendering session so you wouldn't fall asleep. Now watch the CPU clock speed. The CPU had sufficient power budget as well as temperature headroom at first, so it boosted all the way up to 2.7 GHz. In a few dozens of seconds, it got rather hot and it obviously hit its power limit. So as a result, it gradually decreased the clock speed until it reached its base clock of 1.8 GHz. As I said earlier, the less voltage leads to less heat generated by the silicon. Throttle stop is the utility which will help us achieve that. There's this thing. Throttle stop is a very comprehensive software utility. That means you could potentially cause some harm, such as computer no longer able to boot, unless you know what you're doing. Since throttle stop needs administrative privileges, company managed laptops are unfortunately off the hook. That's too bad from a ThinkPad T490, which likes it really hot. The first thing that you want to do is to enable SpeedShift EPP. It is a more advanced CPU boosting mechanism than SpeedStep. If SpeedStep is all you've got, leave it enabled. You also want to leave BD Proc Hot on to be on the safe side since it is the last resort of CPU overheating protection before a shutdown is triggered to prevent catastrophic failure. I also recommend leaving C1E power savings features on because why not? Here comes the star of the show, the FIVR button. In FIVR control section, we will be tuning voltage settings for CPU core as well as CPU cache. You can apply the same method to Intel GPU as long as you use one. Please note, however, an integrated GPU cannot usually reach as low voltage target as those of a CPU. In CPU core voltage section, 
you need to check analog adjustable voltage. Leave everything as is except for offset voltage. Keep range at 125 millivolts. Now comes the most challenging or time consuming part. The whole point of undervolting is to find the sweet spot where your CPU can operate the lowest possible voltage while maintaining high clock speeds. So you will step by step lower the offset voltage a little bit, perform a stress test and repeat provided the system stable. If the system crashes or behaves weird, just revert to the last known stable voltage settings. It's as easy as that. Ta-da! You may be asking, why don't the manufacturer use the lower voltage settings in the first place? Long story short, each CPU is a bit different because silicon wafers always contain some impurities which negatively affect performance of semiconductors. It does also depend where on the wafer the CPU was born. Therefore, to save time and money, the manufacturer defines a rather loose specification for the respective CPU model. My i5-8250U is able to run stable with a voltage offset of minus 115 millivolts. That's fine, but nothing exceptional. The majority of mobile CPUs I tested were able to run with an offset of minus 100 millivolts, no problem. For stress testing purposes, you can use Cinebench again, but I personally use Prime95. Please note, Prime95 is extremely demanding, so use it with caution, as you can easily overheat your system. It is a true torture test. Now let's see how quickly my CPU can render the Cinebench scene when undervolted. Again, watch the clock speed to see if the undervolting hassle was worth it. Man! 2.4 GHz for the whole duration of the rendering session. That's a massive 25 clock speed improvement completely free of charge. And look at that Cinebench score. Let's also have a look at 3 d Mark since its benchmark well imitates a real-world gaming workload. Please note, undervolting improves gaming performance mainly in CPU bound scenarios. The final graph speaks for itself. While the 3 d Mark CPU test made CPU throttle at 1.8 GHz almost the whole time at stock settings, it often boosted to over 3 GHz when undervolting. Well, that would be it for today. The good news is, you can often improve performance of your rig without spending a penny. How cool is that? To be fair though, one sometimes does need to spend a few bucks to gain performance, but you don't always need to buy a whole new computer. Hope you found this guide useful. If you did, please hit that like button or even consider subscribing. In the near future, we'll be looking at other approaches to improving performance. Stay tuned. Until then, take care and have a nice one.